Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about Rob Vinal and his 13F filing at the end of Q3 2023. These 13F filings are terrific for us retail investors. We get to take a look at what super investors are buying and selling during the quarter. And it may give us some insight on maybe some new stocks that we may want to do some research on and potentially buy. In fact, Rob Vinal bought a brand new stock in Q3. So we'll take a look at that particular stock along with the other stocks that he currently holds in his portfolio. This is the first video watched of mine. My name is Justin. I am a value investor and I try to follow other value investors as well. You can see books behind me from Howard Marks uh, to Warren Buffett, Phil Town, and much more. And I recently came out with a video on my current stock portfolio. I'm up about 30% so far this year. If you want to take a look at what that current portfolio looks like, I'll put a link somewhere up here and you can go take a look at it if you so desire. So without further ado, let's just jump right in and take a look at Rob Vinal's portfolio. If you haven't already, please like the video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. So let's get this started. Okay, so the website you see in front of you right now is dataroma.com. I've talked about this website many times before on this channel. It's a free website. Anybody can go check it out. What's really nice is that they follow a bunch of bunch of super investors and you go take a look at their current portfolio kind of take a look at trends you know for example you can kind of see some you know the top big bets or people what super investors have invested as a high percentage in their portfolio maybe the top 10 own stocks in general top 10 buys this past quarter and so on so this is a great website to go check that type of stuff out not only that but one of my favorite parts about this website if you kind of scroll down to the bottom, you can kind of see latest significant insider buys of super investor holdings. So what this tells you is if there's a, a insider from a company, so for example, Howard Hughes Holdings, ticker symbol HHH, that means somebody, an insider, maybe the CFO, the CEO, or someone that owns more than 10% of the company has bought into that company here recently. It also means that this is a position in a super investor's portfolio. So uh, I always take a look at this once a week to see what insiders are buying, potentially take a look at maybe it's a stock I want to buy or just do more research on just in general. So uh, that's just uh, good to see. Uh, so let's go take a look up here. So Rob Vinal, RV Capital is his fund name. So you can see this is his portfolio. Now this is all the 13F filing position. So this will not be anything other than anything on the American or one of the American stock exchanges, either the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. If it's on a, say, a European exchange or an Asian exchange, it's not going to show up here. So just keep that in mind. But he keeps a very concentrated portfolio around 10 to 12 different stocks, typically. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 13, 13F filing positions as of this past quarter. So his new stock that he bought was Pinduoduo, ticker symbol PDD. Now, this is a, a Chinese company. They're kind of in that JD.com type space, Amazon type space, I guess you could say, uh, where they're an e-commerce giant in, in China. In fact, we'll go over to ticker terminal real quick. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see it a little easier. Uh, again, ticker symbol is PDD. So this is a stock that I was in a few years ago. So I think I bought this stock sometime in 2020. You can see the stock chart kind of starting out back in 2020 around $80. I think I bought in when the stock was around, I want to say 60 or 70, but it dropped all the way down to below $40 a share. And I actually owned a couple different Chinese stocks, Pinduoduo, Alibaba, Tencent. Uh, I was actually in Process for a while too, which owns a good chunk of, of Tencent. I know for me personally, I ended up getting out of all Chinese stocks just for the fact that I thought it was just too risky. Uh, now, uh, Rob Vinal is an interesting in investor in the fact that he doesn't invest just in American uh, stocks. He invests in stocks across the world. He is not based in the United States. He actually is based somewhere, somewhere in Europe. I, I forgot exactly where in Europe, but he's not in the United States. So he feels more comfortable investing in stocks across the world. He goes and visits China as well. 
So he has a much better understanding of that market and those companies than say I would just in general. So I I know what my risk tolerance is now. Uh, Pinduoduo is not one that I would personally own, but it doesn't mean that it's not a very good company. In fact, it could be a great company. In fact, this year, you know, the stock has gone from started out around $84, got all the way down to 63, and now it's trading around 110 uh, here today. So uh, just in, even since the last uh, quarter, I would imagine that Rob Vanol has actually made some decent returns on this stock already based on today's stock price in, in general. But what's interesting is we kind of go down here and we take a look at their, their financials. Their revenues have continuously grown quite a bit. When I bought back into them in, in 2000, and I actually now that I think about it, it's probably 2021 now I'm thinking about it. Because I think I bought them around this point and when the revenue just fell and the stock price just completely collapsed after that. But you can see it's recovered very well since the end of 2021. Uh, 10% growth on the top line. This is by quarter, by the way. 10%, 31%, 49 34 46 then 53% uh, as of this, this past quarter, or at least as of the end of, of June uh, 2023. So that's that's really, really good growth on the top line. If we take a look at gross margin, this is also very impressive. You see their gross margins growing as well from 56% up into the, the 70%. Now it looks like it dipped back down to 64% uh, as of the end of June. But nonetheless, the gross margins are, are really, really good overall. In fact, if we take a look at, I wonder what Amazon is. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Because Pinduoduo is somewhat compared to Amazon, so is JD.com. But I'm just kind of curious what gross margins Amazon has. So if we take a look at that, so their gross margins are in the high 30s, low 40%. So Pinduoduo, gross margin-wise, that's really, really impressive. Actually, let's take a look at JD.com real quick, too. Ticker symbol JD. Scroll down. So their gross, oh wow, their gross margins, gross margins are really low. That's crazy, huh? They're in the seven and eight percent range. So I mean, just off off the uh, you know cusp, I would say that you know Pindua do it because of their amazing high gross margins. Uh, they're able to achieve much higher operating margins potentially than say like a JD.com or an Amazon just because they start out with having such high margins at the top. So that, that, that's kind of interesting um, overall. If we go back to Pinduoduo real quick, let's take a look at what analysts think this company is going to do um, over the next several years. So the analyst estimates down here, they're showing that they were around $19 billion in revenue last year. It'll be about $27 billion this year, then 34 41 43 and then $45 billion going out to 2027. So that's a 20% growth on the top line per year, which is pretty phenomenal. But you can see that it's going to be slowing down. At least that's what they're expecting over time, which makes sense. A large company like this, and, and I don't even know offhand how big their market cap. It's got to be well over $100 billion market cap. Yeah, $145 billion market cap. So that is that is huge. But what's also interesting is that their operating margins are really impressive and what they expect it to be uh, even a couple of years out, so 2024, around 24%, 2026, 17, 2027, 19%. So going back to having such amazing gross margin can lead and should lead to much better operating margins, which is absolutely fantastic, which also means they should have some pretty good free cash flow margins, which you can see down here around the 30% range. So if they can do that, that's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, nonetheless, I, I'm not really interested in it myself. Uh, but uh, it's interesting to kind of see those numbers overall. Now, if we go back and look at uh, Rob's uh, portfolio here, so his top position still is Meta. He's owned Meta for quite a while. Now, he loaded up when it dropped this past year. So keep in mind, Meta was around, I think, 350, something like that. We can take a look at a chart real quick. We can look at maybe a five-year chart. So, I mean, at one point they were at, yeah, I mean, 
uh, three, almost 370. It dropped all the way down to below $100 a share. Now, he did say that he didn't buy it at the lowest point, but he did buy it as it was going down. And then he's, and he's held it uh, for a very long time, um, including this past quarter, which surprised me. I thought we would see maybe some selling kind of going on. Uh, because it's getting to be such a big part of his portfolio. So at the end of September, let's see, the stock was around almost $300 a share. So I, I'm surprised we did not see him selling uh, you know, a good chunk of that position. So he still must believe very strongly in Meta, but I wouldn't be surprised if he starts selling some of it uh, moving, moving forward. Now, Credit Acceptance Corp, he's owned this. Stock, I think, longer than any other stock in his portfolio. He reduced that by almost 10%. He did say in his recent investor uh, letter that went out, sometime it was in, in August, so I should probably do a video on that one as well too, that you know he's been kind of reducing that position because it's grown to such a large part of his portfolio. Sold a little bit of Salesforce, added a little bit of Wix. Wix is another company that, that I own that I believe in very strongly. He sold some Carvana stock. So uh, he he was buying over $100 a share. It dropped all the way down to $5 a share. It has recovered a little bit. I think today it's trading around like $35 to $40, something like that. Uh, $37, yeah. So, um, so interesting, kind of selling a little bit there. Uh, interactive brokers, so no activity there in, in the last quarter. Uh, interesting, I, I actually... I'm very interested in this company. I would love to add this to my portfolio at some point. Uh, Interactive Brokers is a, a broker platform. I actually set up a new portfolio on Interactive Brokers about two months ago to kind of check it out. And I, so far, I have liked it. There's some things that I don't like about it. Trying to log in through a computer is just a pain, but doing it through the phone is a breeze. And I think it's very user-friendly. I really like that you can just go in very easily and be able to buy stocks based on a dollar value and not necessarily on a per share. So if you have $500, for example, and you want to go buy, you can buy fractional shares very easily in Interactive Brokers. They constantly send me emails if there's analyst upgrades or downgrades on the stocks I own. So I have been very, very impressed with them. Their margins are crazy, crazy impressive, and they've been growing and I think they that, that's kind of where their mode is, kind of a low-cost provider overall. So I would love to own the stock, but I would really like to see it drop below $80 before I would, would buy into it. But it definitely is a stock that's on my radar that I would love to own in the future at some point. Uh, True Panion is, is a company that he's kind of been in and out of. It's a very low percentage in his portfolio right now. That is a stock that I also own. They're in the insurance space for pets. Now, they've kind of been in a uh, tough position here in the last year and a half. Really, inflation has hurt the business tremendously. Uh, I didn't know, as obviously, when you buy into a stock and you own it longer and you listen to more and more uh, quarterly earnings reports and, and, and read through the quarterly earnings, you, you learn more about the company. What I didn't understand is that insurance companies like Trupanion, there are some states they can't just increase their prices. So California, uh, New York, they actually have to ask permission from those states to increase their premiums. And unfortunately, with, with pet insurance, you know, inflation for vets typically have been around 6%, but we've seen it jump up to 15% over the last year or so. And you can imagine with like True Pan or other insurance companies, they're trying to project out what their costs are going to be a year in advance. And when they think it's going to go up 6% and it goes up 15%, that is really painful <laughs> so that, that they're trying to work through. So I do like True Panion long term, but they have a lot of a lot of headwinds that they're kind of um, kind of going through right now. Okay, so that was Rob Vinal's portfolio in a nutshell right there. His new stock that he bought was Pinduoduo. Credit Acceptance Corp., he, that was probably his biggest sell during the quarter, reducing his position by about 10%. Meta Platforms continues to be his largest position in his portfolio. But I'd be curious from you guys, do you own any of those stocks in your personal portfolio? 
Do you dislike that stock of Penduadua that he added as a new position in the quarter? Love to hear from you guys. Uh, I need to do an update on his investor letter that came out about a month ago. So hopefully I'll be coming out with that in uh, the near term as well. So if you haven't already, hit that like button on the way out. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. I'd uh, love to see you guys as a new subscriber. Thanks for uh, watching. Appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Take care and God bless.